<sighs> no, actually, I don't have a beer. No beer today, internet. Just me. Just me. But we do have the Hyperstone. So big shout out to Andrew Liu. Uh, he reached out to me, wanted to have me stone wash this for him. So I uh, just got done giving it a stone wash. So we're going to do pretty first looks. It's not mine. I want to get it back to him quick. Um, so I'm not doing like a, didn't carry this for days or anything, but did want to, didn't want to let you guys take a look at it because it is the Hyperstone. It's an iconic spinner in the industry. It's one of the few, I don't know. Yeah, probably at this point I could say it's probably safe to say it's one of the few um, especially iconic spinners that I haven't reviewed or taken a look at. So um, let's just uh, get right into it, shall we? Before we get too far into it, I just want to give a shout out to Jonathan Locke and his lady. Um, I think, I don't know if he's married or it's just a girlfriend or whatever, but apparently um, he watches my videos, I think, sometimes late at night while they're in bed. And, uh, ooh, we just got right into that, didn't we? And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I just thought it'd be funny to give him a shout out and make her, uh, you know, tap her and <laughs> look, 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 who's talking about you? Yes, I'm talking about you, lady. You're a nice lady if you let your man get spinners. So uh, anyway, let's take a look at the box and get into all this. We got way off track. I just thought it would be a funny little shout out to do. Um, so in the box, what's in the box? What's in the box? If it's a severed head, I'm going to be very upset. I made that joke before. What are you going to do? Um, so we got the Hyperstone. Um, obviously, let's get the other stuff out of the box. Now, it comes with a spare bearing. In this particular case, it's got a couple extra spare bearings. We might actually, we might try this on camera. We'll leave these out. Um, this one is just sort of a regular bearing. I think Andrew actually said it was magnetized. I didn't feel that, but it did feel like it needed a clean, so maybe that was it being magnetized. And then there's also like a lubed one in here under these spare buttons, so. No, it doesn't appear to be magnetized, but. Kind of hard to hear, but it feel it's got a little bit of a rattly feel. So um, that was the, the bearing that was in it when I got it, and it may have uh, may have taken a little bit of something in shipping. Oh, that's really smooth. You don't hear that at all, do you, Internet? Uh, and then we've got a nice little cloth, a little Allen wrench. We're, we're going to need that. Probably should clip my nails before doing this. I'm sorry. It's just trying to fit it in where I can. Baby sleeping. Um, so then we got the other bearing. That one feels lubed. This one doesn't so much feel lubed as it is just super smooth. Maybe it does feel lubed a little bit. Anywho. Uh, but I like the contrast of these buttons. So these are the ones that he shipped on there to me, but I prefer the look of the contrast buttons. So let's take a look. Let's get all this stuff out of the way. Also, nice little card of authenticity. It's actually kind of nice. It's got kind of like a pearlescent kind of sheen to it. You see that? See that action? Hyperstone. Really cool logo. We are confident in your satisfaction with our products, and each one of them is past stringent performance tests and the highest level of quality control, probably made in Vietnam. Spin off nervousness and impatience. So we believe this is from the first run, or one of the early runs. It's got a kind of a high serial number, but I don't know their... Well, this says 18th of 2017, so there's no way this could be the earliest run. I didn't look at that, but uh, it's, it's well balanced, so uh, we don't have that to really worry about. Like, there was some quality control issues with those, uh, with the newest runs, but... Uh, unless that's just not the right card that comes with it, so. But if we just pick it up and get that out of the way, balance is pretty good. It's actually going to make it look like a bit of a liar, but that's not a very violent switch. So it's actually, and it feels pretty well balanced in hand, so. You can't say like it feels very janky or juddery or wobbly. Well, I guess that would be the wobbly, wobbly. The judder would be right this back and forth, so. Uh, but you see me just get on and jam on it because it is, it is a good little spinner. It's also got this engraving. Uh, I'm, there's no way I'm going to be able to pronounce the name properly. Um, I'm just too American. Uh, but uh, uh, Guyan, Guyan um, uh, did the engraving, I guess, on this. And it's a pretty nice engraving going on here. So um, these kind of like cool circle patterns on it. So it's really nice. And then I gave it a stone wash. The corners on it were a little, uh, I'll be honest, a little bit, uh, a little bit hot spotty. Not too, too bad, but definitely a little bit. And you can still feel it a little bit. Um, but it's not too crazy, um, but especially on the surface where it's uh, engraved. A couple of them, if I really push my finger in, it could probably be uncomfortable. Um, and then the stone washing isn't really going to get inside of there. So uh, some of that's still left, but it's got a nice little texture and it just feels a little softer. It just feels good. Um, so, yeah, pretty iconic. So I think you've kind of already gotten a bit of an idea of how I feel about this now. This actually kind of taking a closer look at it under this light and uh, under the camera like this has me looking at it closer than I've actually looked at it before. And there were some little marks that I thought may have been from the engraving, but I wonder if this is a newer run 
And those are some of the quality control issues that maybe were brought out by the stone wash. I'm not sure. Um, like some of these little edges right here. It almost looks like it was bumped or pinched or something along a machine. Like it machined a little bit extra right along the top here. Very subtle. You can see it more on this side here. And then on these corners. So I don't know. I, I assumed that was actually from the engraving. But I wonder if that was some quality control issues from the machining. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, so it's got an interesting bearing. Let's get under the hood here. Uh, it is, I believe this is a 696 bearing, which I don't know anything else that uses it. It looks very much like a um, 688 uh, or 606. Those bearings are kind of similar. The 606, I believe, has a smaller hole in the middle. Uh, the 688 is a little wider. Uh, but it looks very much like, a, I believe, a 606, not a 688. Um, Let's talk about how it spins. Let's talk about how it spins, and then we'll play around with the bearing and this little thing and, and, and go from there. So uh, right off the bat, it feels, it reminds me a lot of the Hummingbird. Now that's because obviously I think, uh, or not obviously, I think obviously because I had the Hummingbird first, and it's got a very similar design kind of profile to it. So it's kind of got a nice quick flutteriness to it. Again, 62 grams right in that switch, fidgeting sweet spot. Uh, but it throws and pulls really well. So, you know, it's got an asymmetrical design. So anytime you get that, you almost get sort of like two spinners in one to a degree. But I find a lot of times with it, there's not enough of a difference where it really feels like two different spinners, right? You definitely have a different feel when you push and pull um, this way than when you do on this way, but not enough to really feel like two totally different spinners. This is probably about the only one that really feels like two different spinners when you flip it around. Like that feels totally different than, than, than preloading it like that. So... Um, but yeah, so, and much like the Hummingbird, um, I think the, um, the ability to, to flick off of here and then pull against this versus the satisfaction I get from preloading into this, into this corner, uh, and then pushing against that, like I can still rock right in here. And even if I catch it further out, it still pushes off, but I'm just pushing a little closer to the center of gravity or to the center of, uh, rotation. I guess gravity as well, depending on how you do it. Um, but still flicks fine. Uh, but it's really a much more satisfying preloaded preloaded flick this way. Uh, now, if you do it this way, you catch more of the weight, especially if you reach out. If you do it in here, well, that's actually that feels that does actually feel really different. I think a lot of times I was reaching out and getting the weight, which there's more uh, more of a face here on this raised weight, so it's a little gentler on the fingers. Where if you're pulling it in here, you're catching kind of a couple little corners that if you're preloading it really hard a lot, would definitely get to be a bit of a hot spot right here. This this one right here. Uh, I didn't do a spin time test on this. I probably should have to be fair, but anytime it's not an R1E bearing and it feels fast anyway, I'm not, I don't feel inclined to really want to know what the spin time is on this guy. Uh, it's just something I just, I can't say I care about. Uh, just because I know it's not going to be as good as it could be with a with an R188, so, uh, but yeah, it fits, it's nice, it's actually pretty, much like the Hummingbird, it's a little larger than you would expect, right, when you look at the actual spin profile around, like, how far it is, like, my fingers are just barely touching it right there, right, you know, so you almost want to look at these corners, but you really have to see how my fingers have to push apart, like, you get those outer corners, so it actually is a, a relatively large spinner, all things considered. Uh, maybe large isn't the right word, but it's larger than it, than it looks at first glance. So, um, but it pulls, it throws, it flicks really well. Um, so it is, it isn't, it is a nice spinner. I can see why so many people like them. Um, and again, being that this is probably from the second batch, it might have a little bit of QC issues. Um, it seems pretty good to me, again, other than some of the marks around the outside. Um, it's nice. It's a it's a it's a hot little item. It's a good little spinner. So um, the little pouch that it comes in is nice. So it's got this little recess, little thing cut out, so that the button drops in there. I mean, if you've seen a Hyperstone review, you know that. But it's just it's nice little tensions to detail like that. Like the back of this is cut out so that that stays flush, right? So you get this nice little loop. Um, stitch stitched uh, all things considered pretty well. Right, it's pretty even stitching. Especially even where it steps down like this, like that's pretty well done, I'd say. Um, nice little aging color on it. It's a nice hard leather too, so it really is very rigid. So this was probably boiled a little bit to get that rig rigidity, rigidity, 
rigidness. Uh, but it holds well, so we can throw it, we can fidget with it. Uh, it is, it is a pretty satisfying fidgeter. So if you've had your eye on one of these or thinking about one of these, you know, you really got to look to the secondary. I think for the most part, they did a second run. I mean, if you guys don't know the history of these guys, and maybe you don't, maybe we'll take a second to go into that. Um, they were one of the, like, at the top of the game, um, late 2016, I think they started doing these and then early 2017 um, and then they just stopped they completely disappeared and then there was another company um, that was doing like the clonest of clones like it wasn't uh, I wouldn't even consider it a clone it was like a it was like stealing the design they they sold it as if it were a hyperstone most clones are like oh this is from you know fegve but it looks like a stubby no they were selling it branded as the hyperstone looked like the hyperstone actually go watch fabian's video he has got a video where he has one of each and really shows you the difference they had a hyperstone card of authenticity um it just but it just didn't have the quality of the hyperstone so and you, it was even the same amount of money that's like the worst right like well, maybe not. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the worst. Like, you think you're getting an authentic hyperstone. You're spending the money on an authentic hyperstone, and you're not getting an authentic hyperstone. So, uh, But they are. They're, they're really good little spinners. So um, negatives, downsides. I've seen a lot of different versions where it's got, like, one solid weight. It's got these two separate weights. So they've made a bunch of different versions and a lot of different materials. So there are a lot out there. But... Um, yeah, so negatives um, from a fidgetability standpoint and, and the spin performance, uh, it's, a, it's an excellent bar. Uh, my biggest um, bit of feedback or, or criticism would come from these corners right here. Um, even after getting a stone wash and softening them a little bit, they're still a little bit hot. Uh, not enough to bother me, I think, but it would bother some people. So I'm trying to be a little more... Especially when it comes to hot spots, I'm trying to be a little bit more open. I feel like that's something I've wanted to do for a little while, and a lot of the spinners I've been reviewing lately, uh, maybe not all of them, but like this, for example, was smooth everywhere, so it wasn't a hot spot issue to be found no matter what, but trying to be a little more sensitive, I think my fingers are pretty tough, all things considered, so again, I, I don't find hot spots where there's might, but this I definitely think could be a hot spot, if, especially if you do preloaded flicks, but that's pretty easily solved by throwing it around this way, and then again, um, pulling it on the inside here, somehow it feels really light. A lot of times when I'm pulling near the center of a spinner, you feel like you've got all that extra leverage and you're pulling farther away. But for some reason, this makes it feel significantly lighter, almost like, dare I say, <laughs> aluminum, like it's weird, but there's, if you've got a hyperstone, try and preload it right on the inside here and, and tell me if it doesn't feel lighter. I don't know, I don't know what that's about. So anyway, so uh, maybe this bit of a corner is a bit of a hot spot as a negative, and then <clears throat> uh, the other negative, I hate these things. This is like, and again, this was kind of a little early on where maybe it wasn't as big of a thing where people were gluing their bearings and, and using press fit, but these little rings are so finicky that I just can't stand them like. Um, the biggest reason I don't like them is the slightest bit of over-tightening, and it affects the spin. So this almost looks like it had glue on it or something at some point. I wonder if it did. Like, great, it's got some little residue on the outside. Let me try and wipe that off. And let's experience this together, internet. If you're at home watching this, let's make sure you got a nice beer, a nice beverage. Uh, maybe not even a beer if that's not your thing, but something to enjoy. And, uh, and let's enjoy. Let's, let's figure this out together. So I'll show you that at least the trick that I found with these. Um, so when you, when you, if you take this, you don't have to take the screw all the way out, first of all. So don't take that all the way out. Um, a lot of times I think you just feel like the urge to just, well, I'm taking this out, so I take it all the way out. No, don't take it all the way out. Um, and then what you're going to want to do, though, is very, very gently with the lightest of pressures, spin this until it, until it catches and give it just the tiniest little bit more. What that's going to let you do is put a little bit of pressure on the bearing um, so that the bearing doesn't slide quite as freely. Give it just a little bit more. Basically, what you want to be able to do is slide the bearing with a little bit of pressure but not, but really want it to stay in place so it's not gonna fall loose on its own. Now with this, it's got this raised little lip, and what we wanna do is we just wanna center the bearing. And it looks like it kind of, that last bearing I had, it needed to be over each lip just a little bit to feel centered. And then you wanna tighten it ever slow, ever so slightly more. Really, it doesn't take a whole lot. There's, a, there's not a big difference between, yeah, like it feels kind of rattly, and I think that's because that's too tight. So let's loosen this up just a little. Yeah, see, like that, they're just so finicky. But let's experience this. Let's experience this bearing together. It feels like it should be a lot smoother than it feels like it's going to be. 
Yeah, it feels like it's... It's that set screw, man. It's just not a pleasurable experience. Give me glued or press fit. I mean, if you're going to have that kind of saw, I'd rather just have, like, the vertical press. Now, you're going to hear a little bit of a rattle because the balls are loose in there. There's no cage. Oh, I should keep it in frame, huh? I'm really trying to get my ear. So, like, if you can see me, I've got my ear to the, to the spinner and I'm not looking at the camera at all. That's why it keeps going off frame. So let me actually look at this. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. I think, you know, if, if I got a good fit, I feel like, I don't know if I would ever come around to like a cageless style bearing. Again, this was kind of, especially early on in the in, in the spinner scene when I got my first spinner, which I don't really consider my first spinner because I got it from Amazon and returned it. It was, I don't think it was a 608, but it might've been, but it was a cageless bearing with like 10 balls in it. So um, you saw that a lot more early on than you do these days. So not many people are running cageless bearings. And I don't really know what that does for spin time. I feel like, you know, in some respects there's less resistance, but in other ways there's more, you know, not having that cage and that friction. So, so I don't know. I don't know what that would do. I try to be educated about bearing gel. I really do, especially since I did that great bearing review and a lot of people ask me bearing questions, but um, as far as cageless bearings, very little experience and I don't know. I don't know what it would do. But let's put these buttons back on. And again, I love the option of having two buttons, especially something like this with a brass, so that I can have... Yeah, that feels a lot better. Uh, so that I can have that, that different two-tone look. So uh, what else do we have to say? We've gone on a little bit long. There was a little bit of a story involved, but uh, quick recap. Um, really, really excellent spin quality. This is this is good. I feel like if I had this longer or this was mine and I... I you know, I don't know how I feel about the engraving. I love how it looks, but fidgeting-wise, it almost feels like it takes a little bit away from it. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think for how it looks, and it's a hyperstone, how iconic you want it, I think that's fine. Um, but, yeah, really, really top-notch top -notch spinner um, in terms of fidgetability. Um, fidgetability is definitely a two-thumbs-up. Packaging is definitely two-thumbs-up. I mean, the box is a little large, um, and I, I'm kind of more of a lot along the minimalistic approach sides of things I prefer, but um, really excellent leather pouch, extra buttons, cleaning cloth, anything that has a set screw should have the on wrench it needs for it. You should have that, but um, it's nice that it does have it. These are extra, extra bearings that it didn't come with that someone uh, put in it um, or put with it. So yeah, so um, all in all, I think, yeah, I think the set screw is enough to really ward me off. Um, the not using a R188 bearing on its own isn't a big issue. However, finding a nine, a 696 bearing could be a pain. Um, so getting replacement bearings could be a pain and a set screw is, uh, again, I find a bit of a pain. So uh, I'll give it the one and a half thumbs up because I think if you see it out there or you want one, you won't be disappointed in it. It's, it's definitely a spinner that can perform. If you don't like the look of it, I don't think you're necessarily missing anything. So if you don't feel the urge to go out and get it, I don't think you need it. And again, the, the set screw alone is probably enough to warrant me just wanting to stay away. I just don't like it. I don't enjoy it. So uh, that's why I'm kind of excited about the last room standing stuff. Let me real quick as well, if you stuck with me this long, I want to give a little bit of an apology to um, to Ryan. Um, my comment regarding Ryan, the mod over at last room standing was the biggest reason I didn't want to... Oh, we're going to need something to spin since I put this away. Let's pull it back out. It's easy enough. Um, was the biggest reason I didn't want to upload that video. Mainly because, you know, I think he's kind of caught in the middle and he was kind of probably put in an unfortunate position, probably from Alex and Ben anyway, in terms of how they wanted that their their Facebook group and stuff run um you know that said I mean he's still you know does what he has to do at least again from what I heard you know essentially secondhand or what I saw but didn't experience personally like the fact like you know people are asking legitimate questions and he's shutting them down and kicking them out you know he's probably put in that position where he had to do that but it's still it's still not a not a good place to be so um and I did someone uh Jordy uh mentioned in um uh, not Jordy um Crap. No, I'm not going to remember your name. I'm, I'm sorry. I, we, I, chat, I chat with you all the time on the, on the comments and on the groups and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, I, I pinned his post to the top so people could get a little bit of my, my take on that because uh, I don't want to shy away from those comments. I don't want to say that sort of thing and, and like back down, but I also realized it, it probably wasn't quite warranted towards him. So Ryan, as far as I'm concerned, you're probably a decent guy and I, you probably got put in a shitty position and that sucks. So sorry about that, bro. Um, all love and again it, it seems like you guys are really trying to work hard to turn it around and again everybody has ups and downs and positives and negatives so it's not as black and white as someone is or isn't a dick so um so let's give them the benefit of the doubt again ben and alex had their chance uh, i'm not going to apologize for anything i said in fact i feel exactly the same if not worse depending on the day um but jordy um 
Let's turn that thing around. Let's make access micro great again. Kisses internet.